Today's episode is brought to you by Tuck Tech Kayak. Don't, don't chase him, don't scoop him. Hurry, hurry. I'm gonna let you get into position, Christina. It's gonna come up and into the water. Wow, look at him holding his ground. Oh, these mangrove crop roots are messing me up. Where are you gonna go, bud? Where are you gonna go? Where are you gonna go? About a year ago, the team and I filmed an episode comparing the frilled dragon to the Pokemon character known as Heliolisk, and in the process became completely obsessed with collecting Pokemon cards. True story. Now, since my mission to catch them all began, I also became friends with the one and only Professor Oak, who recently delivered this message. Now, I have a special mission for you if you are willing to accept it. I need you to form an elite team of skilled poker catchers to find and document the living evolutions of the Tyranitar. Now I'll expect a full report back when the task is complete. Mm-hmm. When Professor Oak calls, Coyote Peterson answers the challenge. And I know just the location to visit. When it comes to finding the real-life evolutions of Tyranitar, there's no better location than the Florida Keys. To assist me on this mission, I've employed two of the best pokey catchers I know, Mario Aldecoa and Christina Wilson. In my opinion, Tyranitar really looks like a green iguana mixed with a T-Rex. So with that in mind, it's time to find our targets. All right, Christina, we're here to capture some iterations of the Pokemon a hatchling green iguana, which okay. represents the? Larvitar. And a juvenile, which represents the pupitar. Now we're out here at night, which is a little unusual because green iguanas are usually found during the day, active and running around. However, at night they are sleeping, which yes. makes it very easy for us to sneak up on them and gently catch them from bushes and trees. Christina? Yeah? Can you see something? <gasps> I see it. <laughs> oh, there you go. You, you found it. Now you've got to gently <laughs> get this little don't, larvitar don't lose down. It. Don't lose the larvitar, Christina. Lines are closed. Hi there, little guy. Oh, you are a little fighter. Whoa, look at that tail whipping. Oh, you trying to bite me? They're Very so good. velvety smooth compared to adults. Like the, the texture yeah. of the skin is like a lot softer. So this is a hatchling green iguana, which represents the- Larvitar. Larvitar, right? Yeah. And just like the different Pokemon evolutions, they each have their different powers, right? right? Or unique characteristics. So what would be one of the powers of a hatchling green iguana? I would say this long tail for whipping. Right? Yeah, yeah, sure. Okay, okay. Speedy too, right? Because they're tiny, so they gotta evade predators, so they gotta right. be fast. And of course, that beautiful green camouflage. So pretty. All right, let's go. give it a little boop. Boop. At the moment, we are on the hunt for a juvenile iguana, which would be the pupitar. So that's what we're looking for right now. And they tend to hide and sleep a little higher in the trees. So we've come over here to these larger trees right here to see if they are resting and sleeping up here. Oh. Christina? Yeah, yeah. Juvenile. Where? Oh! Very difficult to see, but yeah, 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 yeah. it's in there. Wow. So the iguana is definitely a lot higher than we can reach. Yeah. So we're going to use our snare. We're going to try to nudge it gently. Okay. And it's going to be like, what's happening? And it's, it's instinct is going to be like, I'm going to fall from the okay. tree. And we're going to do this as gently as possible. I'm going to try and catch it in midair. Oh, man, you're quick. So basically, <laughs> we poked an iguana out of a tree. Yes. Wow. Sorry, buddy. He you, was, are, you are fast. He was sleeping and we disturbed you. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Oh my gosh. Uh, but this is a perfect example of a juvenile green iguana. What are some characteristics you can notice on this juvenile iguana? It's got this really impressive ridge line right here. These color patterns are much more pronounced. Right. And he's really robust compared to the larvitar. Yeah. This iguana is nice and healthy. So this is definitely the next step to evolution. But there is another evolution that we're going to try and catch. And that is the Tyranitar. Ooh. With two of our three evolutions successfully documented, it was going to take something special to land a living Tyranitar. 
Whispers around the Keys speak of a mysterious island where dragon-sized iguanas are rumored to live. A perfect opportunity to use Tuk Tuk kayaks on the open ocean. Lightweight and built for exploration, assembly's just a few simple folds, a Velcro strap, and the snap of an oar. And we are officially off. Time to find a remote island and some giant lizards. Two hours later. Okay, well now that we are on island, the exploration begins. And this time of day, iguanas will be perched out on the branches of different trees, soaking up sun. So with any luck, we'll be able to spot one. As long as it's Tyranitar sized, we're gonna be in good shape. There, right there, right there, right there. Right oh God, get this, get this, get this. Look at that. Huge iguana. Go that way. Don't, don't chase him, don't spook him. Far out. He's over here. Hurry, hurry. <laughs> Didn't even need to use the snare. Holy cow, that is a Tyranitar. Look at the size of that beast. Holy mackerel, that thing is a VMAX for sure. That's without question the biggest iguana I've ever caught. Okay, I gotta be really careful because even though these creatures are vegetarians, you definitely have to watch out for that bite. Oh my goodness, we have got our Tyranitar. Holy mackerel, when you're talking about a Tyranitar sized iguana, I don't know that you could top this specimen. It's gotta be close to six feet in length. And look at the giant spines that run down the ridge in the center of the back. And you can see how healthy this reptile is. Look at the bulge in the side of its belly. This is a well-fed iguana. Now, it's important to note that this is technically an invasive species here in the Florida Keys. But when you're talking about a remote island like this, that animal right there is the king of the environment. The only thing that it is competing with are different shorebirds that we'd be flying in and temporarily using this island. So feasting on any of the small crabs, fruits, nuts, whatever this lizard can get its mouth on, for the most part, they are vegetarian, but they will occasionally go omnivore if they need to. Look at the big spikes up on top of the nose. And you can see why we picked this species specifically to be representative of Pokemon's Tyranitar. And when we caught this lizard, it was swimming, using this tail like a rudder to propel itself forward. And it will also double as a weapon. If there is a potential predator that comes into the environment, this lizard can swing its body around when it's on land and use that tail like a bullwhip. Trust me, with the bone and the scales that are on the end of this, you catch that to the face, you're gonna think twice about trying to turn this iguana into a meal. Got another big iguana right here. Just came up and out of the water. I'm gonna let you get into position, Christina. It's gonna come up and into the water. Wow, look at him holding his ground. Oh, these mangrove crop roots are messing me up. Where are you gonna go, bud? Where are you gonna go? Where are you gonna go? I got his tail, I got his tail. You gotta get his head. Oh, careful, don't get bitten. Jeez. You okay? You okay? Hold on, hold on. Woo. I got his legs. You got his legs? Yep. Got him, got him, got him. He's gonna he's gonna fight with that tail. Be careful. Woo! Oh. Oh. Iguana number two. You good? You good? Oh, you just trying to hit me with the tail. Wow! <laughs> Double Tyranitar! <laughs> that is a big iguana. And he put up a real fight. And that's why he's this big. Is because he's a fighter. Look at the tail, man. He's still whipping it. Look at that thing. Jeez. Man. That was crazy. Oh, you almost took a bite. Oh, your arm oh, is dude. bleeding. Is it? We oh, got blood. Oh. Dude, he opened his mouth wide. I almost thought my hand was going in his mouth there. Holy cow. Second. Well, let's go bring it next Woo! to the other one. 
Well, talk about a chaotic moment. This second iguana, which is actually very Tyranitar colored with the green and black, came out of nowhere. Christine and I tag team that catch. I was just able to get the backside of the lizard. You had to come in, man, your arm's bleeding. You can see just how powerful those claws are. Oh my gosh. You took a hit, but wow, how about that? Double dragon action. So how nerve wracking was that for you to grab a lizard that big? I mean, your arm is still shaking. You know, I'd, I've lived out here for eight years and I've never grabbed one this big. So it was just adrenaline rush the whole time. And when I saw this sucker open his mouth all the way, that was scary. I really did think I was gonna uh, lose a few fingers there, so. Those teeth will definitely open you up. Look at them side by side. Now, I would say yours is probably a little bit younger Ooh. than mine, <laughs> and you can tell that he's got a lot of fight in he's him. He's still got a lot of fight he's in him. He's trying to whip you with that tail. Yeah, he is. he's holding his muscles right now. He's just ready to leap. Professor Oak sent us on the mission, Tuck Tech Kayak. Big thanks to those guys for sponsoring this expedition. But I'm Coyote Peterson. I'm Christina Wilson. Be brave. Stay wild. We'll see you on the next adventure. <laughs> Double dragons. <laughs> Boom, Woo! tail high fives. <laughs> Woo! That was amazing. In the end, my team of fearless pokey catchers and I accomplished the mission. We caught them all, each of the living Tyranitar evolutions. From the adorable Larvitar to the juvenile Pupitar, and for the win, a pair of ginormous Tyranitars. And not only did we make Professor Oak proud, but we also put Tuck Tech Kayak to the open ocean test, and it did fantastic. If you would like to catch your own Tuck Tech Kayak, make sure to visit their website. What's going on, Coyote Pack? In case you missed it, on April 10th at 7 o'clock p.m. Eastern, I will be going live on YouTube to take a bite from a giant centipede. All to raise money for Save the Horns, my fundraising campaign supporting rhino conservation in South Africa. Mark your calendars and I'll see you on Wednesday, April 10th, right here and live on the Brave Wilderness YouTube channel.